children's program that inculcating skills, values, morals, in informing and entertaining children around the globe. This time out is divided into three beautiful segments. The first is story time, mm -hmm. and the second is DIY segment. The third is the diary, where we go on an exciting trip. We'll be right back after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back from the break. This once upon a time in a rural Duguta, it was because of this that for some time Kabi has been speaking of getting rich. But how can you become wealthy, marry a wife, and own many properties when you have refused to work? Queried Enaru the Palm Wine Tapper. That is simply impossible. Kabi threw himself into a fit of laughter. <laughs> Who told you it is impossible? My dreams will definitely come true. Good, remarked Enaru, but you must start working. You can't just sit and fold your hands waiting for all this to happen to you. You will die wretched as you are an idle man. Forget, Kabi discarded the idea. Mana will definitely fall for heaven. For me, don't be deceived, Kabi. Mana won't fall from heaven, cautioned Enaro, the pan white tapper. You have to work with your hands. I haven't heard of anyone who had made it in life without working for it. Take a look at all the wealthy men in this village. They have all worked for it, said Enaro. Beating his hands against his chest, Kabi boasted, With I, Kabi, all things are possible. When Enaru knew that Kabi couldn't be persuaded, he left him to his fate. That day, while Kabi was returning home, he came across a goat tied to a tree trunk. His eyes were dazed and he felt very hungry. Looking left and right, he untied the goat and took it home. The goat bleated noisily. His, his tiny legs ferried him at once to his compound. When Odimi, the owner of the goat, came outside to check on his goat, he was shocked to see that he couldn't find the goat. He knew instinctively that Kabi must be behind the theft of his goat. Furiously, he dashed to Kabi's house. Odimi went berserk when he found out that the goat was indeed in Kabi's house. Kabi, the thief, Odimi hollered, How did you get my goat into your house? Kabi was taken aback, but still he protested. Odimi made a move to snatch the goat. Kabi prevented him. If you dare move an inch closer, I will chop off your head, threatened Kabi. His eyes were red with rage. The old man was frightened. He knew better than to engage Kabi. David, he sent his guard to fetch when they had reached the palace. The goat was tied to Kabi's stone. Kabi smacked. My king. I don't know what you are talking about, denied Kabi. Why did you steal Odimi's goat? The king asked. By now, the villagers had all gathered. They rebuked Kabi vehemently. It's funny things. The king was furious. I wonder what has come over your senses. If you want to eat goat meat, can't you go and beat the king? But God has told us to have dominion over everything that moves on the earth. Kabi mumbled. I was only having dominion over the goat. <laughs> Laughter enveloped the palace. Kabi's funny remark drew the air of the king. Take him away, ordered the king. Two guards came forward and grabbed Kabi's arms. While they were dragging him out of the palace, he implored, Pardon me, my king. Remember, roared with laughter. Kabi was flogged 40 strokes and was sent home. Not seeing his wounds, Kabi returned home sad dejected and hungry and that day he decided to confront some of the rich men in Duguta the first man he approached was Efe the first man he approached was Efe who owned a very large farmhouse 
with thousands of cattle, if he was shocked to see him at his house. Is this not Kabi, the sluggard? He said almost to himself aloud, Pray, tell me, what is the source of your wealth? I desire to be rich, Kabi said. Puzzled by Kabi's question, if he was suddenly was silent for a while, and he finally opened his mouth and said, Hard work. If you must be rich, you must work very hard, Kabi. Kabi wasn't ready for this. His countenance changed, and he was so unhappy to hear that hard work is the, is the source of being wealthy. If he observed Kabi closely and he knew he wasn't prepared to work, he knew how lazy and idle Kabi was. Think about it. If you had actualized all the time, if you had actualized all the time you have wasted loitering about doing nothing, you would have by now become rich if you had done something meaningful with your time. Nonsense, blotted Kabi. Must I walk before I become rich? He stood up and stormed out of the house. If you watched him go in disbelief, in disbelief, Kabi headed straight to Jadifede's house, one of the richest men in Duguta. Pray, tell me, what is the source of your wealth? Kabi asked. Jevede sang for, this, for the same hymn book as a fee. You must work with your hands and do something meaningful. Only fools will refuse to work and they want to eat. They will definitely die of poverty, Devete said to Kabi. When Kabi had confronted all the men in Duguta and they had all said the same thing, he was sure that he wouldn't get a different answer. One day, he was at the palm wine joint. He overheard conversation between two men. Have you heard? Asked the first man, a short fellow. Heard what? Asked another man who had a long beard. The latter man sounded very curious. The former man opened up and told him the gist. There was a certain rich man who lived in a faraway land. This man's father had buried a box of gold before he died. Bef before he died, he told his sons about this secret possession. The rich man is looking for a young, vibrant man who would help him dig the hole and bring out the box of gold. He has promised to reward the person handsomely. The man had vowed to reward the person who could help him retrieve the box. But the funniest thing is, no man has shown up yet, said the man. The man went further to say that if he were still a young man, he would have gone to dig up the box of gold. But why hasn't anyone shown up yet? Asked the man with the long beard in a tune. By now, Kabi was very curious. He reasoned that if he could go and grab the offer, he could be very rich. Curiously, he drew closer to the men to hear more about the gist. The man who had talked about the secret boss decided to take him to the rich man's house the next day. Now, Kabi didn't know that this was a trick. The man whose name was Odofo had discussed Kabi's issue with the said rich man and had planned to make Kabi realize that it is only hard work that can guarantee success. The next day, after traveling for hours, both men arrived at the rich man's house. Odofo introduced Kabi to the rich man. The man nodded his head and he turned to Kabi. Are you sure you can help me retrieve my father's box from the ground? He asked. Kabi nodded his head in affirmation. But you, you have to pay me for this job, he said. The rich man smiled. This is, this is for sure. You have to retrieve the box first, he said. The man took Kabi to his backyard and showed him a spot. There, the sun had set in, biting his skin. Frustrated and disenchanted, Kabi gave up the search. He cried to the rich man, Look, I have even dug up the subsoil and the box isn't here. Tell me, isn't this a joke? Anger was written in his eyes and the rich man laughed. <laughs> then he told Kabi the truth. You are a young man, Kabi. And the blood of vigor is still flowing in your veins. 
if you can use this energy to do something meaningful, be rest assured that you will be rich. He knew that the rich man was right. Kabi thanked the rich man. When he returned to Dukuta, he became rich because he started working very hard. Mm. The moral of this, of this story is that laziness is bad. You cannot achieve anything by being lazy. If you want to make progress, you have to work hard. And for sure, you will see success. So stop giving excuses, get up, take up the challenge, and I bet you success awaits you. We're going to take another short break now before we go to the DIY segment. Stay with us. Welcome back from the break. On this segment, we'll be showing you how to make a simple apron. Apron that is used to cook, just a very simple apron, using needle and thread. You don't need a machine to make apron. Enjoy it. Hello viewers, this is Blessing, also known as Fine Wine. She will be teaching us how to make an apron. The items we'll be needing for this DIY are a piece of material, a scissors, a matching thread for sewing allowance and all. We'll take 20 inches for the ropes for the waist. And we'll also take 3 inches width. We'll cut it out then make two types like this for the waist now we have cut all the things we need to cut it's ready this is the apron the pocket the rope for the neck and of course the two ropes for the waist so we will now thread our needle and start our middle needle work to the end, we'll leave this other side open to be able to turn it. Fold your thread into two like this and thread it on While your you're needle. folding it into two, by the time you thread it, it will become four. The reason is to make the stitches strong so it doesn't loosen. This is the three pieces, they are all hand sewn. The next thing we'll do is to be turning it inside out using the safety pin. Okay, so now we have turned the three ropes out. Now we're going to be fixing the neck rope to the cloth like this. We'll fold it. So it with your needle and thread like this. You can see this is what we now have. What is left now is for us to fix the pocket. Now the essence of this DIY is just to, you have a material in your house, use it to sew an apron. You don't need to buy an apron from the market. So the pocket now, this DIY is done with needle and thread. No, this is needle and thread so you just if you have free material in your house you can just use it with your needle and thread and sew a beautiful apron like this one so we'll be fixing the pocket right about now so we're going to be using the lighter you can see how rough the edges are this is a piece for the pocket you are using the lighter to burn the all the edges and the excesses this DIY should not be done for children less than the age of 12 use the lighter to burn the rough edges of the pocket since we are not sewing it on the machine we use it to burn the edges so it can be smooth the same lighter we use to burn all the edges of the apron this rough part in order to give it a smoothness this diy should not be done for children less than the age of 12 so they'll be able to manage the fire so after burning it round we will then sew it with our needle and thread to the apron like this 
okay people this is the beautiful apron made by fine wine and so with the idea of this is that you just have a piece of cloth to your hand you need to buy from the market just sew it yourself do it yourself and be happy the edges were made clean with the aid of lighter remember that this diy should be done by children above age 11 under the supervision of an adult because we are using fire so it should be done under the supervision of an adult thank you so much for watching welcome back i hope you can now make your own apron now this is a diary we'll be taking an exciting trip to obud cattle ranch come with us Nestled amidst the breathtaking landscape of Oshi Ridge in Sankwala Mountain, within the lush expanse of Oban Liku local government area in Cross River State, Nigeria, lies the enchanting Obudukato Ranch. This iconic destination beckons travelers with its promise of adventure, natural beauty, and unforgettable experience. The journey to Obudukato Ranch at the gate where visitors embark on an adventurous ride along the narrow roads that wind beneath the towering hills as the rugged terrain unfolds before them anticipation builds setting the stage for the wonders that are await within one of the ranch's most iconic features is the accelerating cable car ride suspended in the air and propelled along a cable the cable car offers passengers a thrilling journey above the vertant landscape below with each passing moment passengers are treated to panoramic views that inspire both ill for the surrounding natural beauty and a hint of exhilarating fear as they gaze down into the lush green forest below the cable car accommodates at least four passengers at a time ensuring that friends and family can share in the exciting moment together. But the adventure doesn't end there. Visitors can stroll along the canopy walkway, suspended high above the forest floor, offering a unique perspective of the rich biodiversity and tribes below. For those seeking a moment of serenity and reflection, Angel's View awaits, offering breathtaking vistas that stretch out the horizon among the ranch's many highlights is the presidential villa, a luxurious retreat nestled amidst the tranquil surrounding, where guests can indulge in the ultimate comfort and relaxation. And those looking to improve the vibrant